Well, got to get out in this nice cold weather. I guess spring is sprung and gone away again. Been in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and wake up this morning, it was 30 some degrees, and it's still 40 some degrees. And here it is, two o'clock in the afternoon. But I got to head out to one of the parks, the one that I ran fiber in. It's been uh, like hour and a half ago, it's been just like the modem's been rebooting because it'll disconnect everything come back everybody gets connected 30 minutes later does it again I <clears throat> told uh, the modem I logged into my account with spectrum and was able to tell it to reboot usually that solves the issue like if they've done an update or something usually a reboot will uh, fix that well it didn't fix it this time it keeps saying it says disconnected when I told it to reboot and it said uh, when it is connected it says status unavailable or unavailable status or something like that even though my equipment is showing online and I can log into it. But it reboots again within another 30 minutes. So I'm going out here and power cycle it and see if that will fix the issue. That's what the uh, representative on the phone said. That's probably what it's going to take. She, she said usually rebooting it remotely uses usually fixes the problem, which... In you know from my experience that is the case but not everyone so I'm gonna to have to drive out here and actually unplug it plug it back in monitor it on the phone and be sure it's not dropping out and see if the status changed see if it says connected instead of unavailable status or whatever says connected and it stays connected then I can go back to the uh, to the studio and edit this video and upload it to YouTube hopefully it's gonna be that easy I wish I had a way to power cycle it remotely but I need internet to do it remotely but if I'm having problems with the internet I can't do that and I contacted the one that lives in the house at the connection and I have not got a response I left a voicemail I contact the RV park owner have not got a response there either I was just trying to save myself a trip it's like an hour round trip it's like 25 minutes each way but sometimes you just have to get out there and go do what you got to do and call it a day and that's what I'm doing so let's get over there and see if we're gonna get as lucky as lucky as I hope I will be unplug it plug it back in and the problem goes away I got another site that for the last three days periodically it will disconnect and reconnect like three times during the day and then it'll skip one or two days and do it again there's not really many people in that RV park so I think there's only like two people out out in that park and they're not, they are not really heavy users so if it's going to go out and, and reveal what the problem is hopefully it goes ahead and do that before it, got, before it gets warm weather so people start getting back there but if not I have just have to fix it when, whenever it decides to let me know what's wrong but let's get out there 
and get this one hopefully unplugged, plugged back in and fixed. This is some good drink here. Good old Lipton green tea water, watermelon. My son gets these things and I never pay attention really to what flavor he's got and I grab this one it just really like strong. It's good. But let's get out there and see what we can get this thing to do and get it fixed. I want to get back in where it's warm and and stay there. All right, here we are. <clears throat> Getting over here. Let's see if we can unplug this. Check online and be sure that it stops rebooting. Why it does it, I don't know. They say sometimes temperature will affect the, 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 the equipment. It looks like they buried the line. That's nice. Okay, they buried the line. It's nice for them to come out and bury the line. Nice. So I don't have to finish it. Huh. I just couldn't find a time to come over here and, and you see where they actually dug it. It wasn't a machine because the owner told him not to use the machine because it got my fiber down there and some other things. So. But they finished it. What did they do over here? He said they were on this pole that day when it went out for like <clears throat> a little bit less than an hour. I don't know what they were doing, but he said they were had equipment out here and everything, so I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Prop core? I have no idea. But they ran a, you know, that's where the technicians ran a new line in this tap. And we hadn't had any issues since. <clears throat> but you see they got an arrow. I guess that's telling where the lines are. Because that's exactly where my line is. Maybe they're doing some kind of survey or something. They're going to do something with the road or something. I don't know. But let's get over here and get this thing unplugged and plugged back in and see if we can solve this issue see it keeps on rebooting that's what i keep seeing looks like he's not here today usually he's back here painting but he's not <clears throat> so let's open this up and see what we get to see in here if anything which i don't think it will be nothing but a modem but fiber man I love seeing that fiber in there but it's been working ever since I left the house of course but we're gonna power cycle it anyway kill the power then we're gonna plug it back in and see what comes of it Come on, get in there. There we go. The box has got to be lined up 100% exactly right, or it just will not close. So let's see what we see uh, <clears throat> in the app and see if it's actually uh, connecting. All right. See the uh, fiber modem over there, router. It's not connected. We hadn't put that in yet, and we may not have to. Because I'm going to show you something that may fix that problem. I won't even have to have the equipment over here. I may have to come out and take this fiber out of here. I doubt if I take up the tubing because I don't want to mess up this grass since it's already grown back. I'll just leave it there and just cut it off, I guess. We'll just leave it there. But let's see if we can get these things to actually come back up and running as the modem 
actually reboots. Let's see if that gets them back online. Come on. Oh. There's one. The CE4 should come up. And the SF Edge Rider X should come back online as well. At least I'm hoping it will. Come on. Come on, two more. May have to get a technician out here. Strange how uh, that one uh, access point came up and the modem, I mean the router, has not come up yet. Because the internet gets to the router first. Come on. Come on. This is the part I hate waiting and waiting. Come on. Come on. May have to get them just to come out here. Now hopefully they can make an appointment in the morning because I still have to take my daughter to work. Uh, next two days. This is Tuesday. Wednesday she's got to be there at 5 and Thursday's got to be there at 4. And it's an hour drive. So... <clears throat> Come on. Come on, equipment. Come on. You should be up by now. Come on. Margie, come on. Make this easy for me. Make this easy. It's like we're going to have to get a technician out here because it's not booting all the way up. And that sucks, man. It really sucks. Let's see if I can log into uh, <clears throat> the account on the modem side, Spectrum, and see... If it still says unavailable status or whatever it was. All right, this is what I get on the modem side when I log in. Still says status unavailable. Even though I power cycled it, it's still, still not doing what it should. It should not say that. It should say connected or disconnected not something in between so let's go back to the equipment my equipment and see what it's doing see if everything's up and running now i've seen these modems run when it has that status unavailable for days to no end and as we see All the equipment that's supposed to be online is showing online. That one Edge Router X fiber one will not because it's physically not even there. Alright, here's the uh, line that they buried, which is the feed they got right here. That goes underground all the way up in there. And you see... Do you believe that's the one? Uh, yeah. And then you see it comes out of there, comes around the pole, and goes into that hub. Not into the tap, but right it directly in the hub itself connector. And that's the feed that's going in there. And they supposed to make it hot and turn it on and get a connection in the RV. Something like 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. At least that's what the owner told me. 
and he wants me to be here. If that's the case, and then we no longer have to have a connection over there and run fiber down this fence. We have our own connection, which automatically is going to save us money. Because we don't have to pay for the tower anymore, or location of backhaul. So, let's get out of here and see if it's actually holding up or not. Even though the 120 radio sector AP says it's offline, but it shows all the clients in the RV park actually in the green, connected, some passing traffic. So, I don't know. Guess I'm just going, as long as it stays on, I'm okay and everybody's connected and working. We'll be all right. It's just too cold to be out there to, today to be messing with all that stuff. And I'm still not over being, not last Saturday, but Saturday before working in that rain, I still got a little cold from it. And I'm not going to get in this wind. Uh-uh. Nope. I'll be out for a month. And I'm not young as I used to be. And my system is more vulnerable uh, sickness. And I'm not going to test it and see where the borderline is of, you know, gone too far. So let me look at it and see if it's still online. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Here we are, this big mess. This is why I want to put that fiber router in here so I can get rid of all this. Because I would have to have one power supply for this. And all, everything would be connected into the edge router um, fiber router itself. So I don't have to have all these POEs in here and everything. This is the uh, power for the uh, fiber ether, uh, internet from ethernet wire to fiber, which is right back there. The media converter and this would uh, only sends out one PoE and the SPF is actually sends out on all of them I do believe and that means I can get rid of this uh, switch or this uh, yeah, nano switch up there I just run all them wires down here and plug it all in one place but everything here is nice and tight um, see any concerns here except it's crowded as I don't know what but that's going to be resolved hopefully in the next two or three weeks but we're just going to have to monitor it and if it keeps doing what it's doing I'm going to have to get Spectrum out here and get them to check the uh, connection And here's the reason why I probably will be taking out the fiber. It's because they got a hub put in here. They finally got one in here. Probably locked. Yep. Yeah. I'm not going to go get a tool and try to open it. But that's what they ran in here from what I showed you at that pole, that direct connection. They ran it. Fed it. It's amazing how they had the technology and the equipment that they can run a wire from all the way over there, all the way over here without breaking ground. It's all underground. It's amazing. But I guess uh, I get back to the studio. If it keeps dropping out, even when I'm heading back to the studio, if I see it dropping out, I'm just going to go ahead and call them and get them set up an appointment for me to come out here with meet them and uh, resolve this issue. But it seems like it's on their side. We'll see. All right, we got Spectrum here. It looks like the uh, little activity going on here. 
and ever since I called them to come out here, and daggone, this thing's been working. Hadn't dropped off line yet. All right, the technician's testing the line. He said it's uh, got noise in it, and that's coming straight from the tap from the road. All right, he kept playing around with it, playing around with it, playing around with it, and he finally got it to get the numbers that he wanted. And I'm gonna put this in here when, uh, hopefully tomorrow, I'll get my new connection actually in the RV part. Then I can just use this barrel connector and tie this line and this line together, eliminate this one, and just feed this house with it because I'll no longer be needing or even be here on this connection so I got all the fiber back in here and it's all working we're online so we should be good and I can have all this in the RV park. No longer have to have it here. Well, the technician was satisfied. He finally got everything to line up where he wanted. He said it was just showing noise for whatever reason. But he was able to isolate of where the noise was coming from. The line from the tap at the road came in to their box on the side of the house, had a splitter to two, one going in the house for the ones that live there, one feeding my box with another modem. When he ties my modem straight through, bypassed the two-way splitter, and let it run for five, eight minutes, it all lined up. When he connected theirs back on <clears throat> the splitter and as well as mine, it started messing up. So something to do with their line in the house is messing it up. And if that's the case, and me and, and if I be getting a new line here in the RV part, that would solve that issue for me. Now Will it fix the problem for them too? Because they said they've been having problems. Hopefully if they're on a line by themselves with it in a new tap on the, at the road, they may not have no issues anymore. Don't know. <clears throat> but if they do, they'll just call and get a technician and come out and fix it. But hopefully tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be a busy day because I have this uh, guy wants to put tracker antennas on some of my towers. I don't have to be there, but I meet him in each one he wants to do so he can set up his whatever. Then when he's done, I can come by and give him internet. So I can be here and meet the owner and get the new connection done. See how that's going to be done. Because to get the internet connection to the RV that the owner wants it connected in that he uses for office from the hub that I showed you that they put in the RV park, it has to go under a road. So I don't know if they're going to be willing to run a cable across the, that road and then just have somebody come by and bury it later. Or they're going to say, well, we're going to have to get a crew to come out to run the line. <clears throat> and then we can come back and connect it. I don't know which steps it's going to be taken. Hopefully they come out tomorrow. They run a line over to that RV. Get it into the RV. Put up a modem. Close the ticket saying it's done. Then all I got to do is take mine and move it all over there. 
and take his modem, take it off, put mine on it, and set all mine up, then he can turn his in, whatever it takes, and tell them to move my modem to this address, and then we'd be good. But we will see if that's how it's going to plan out that easily. But right now, I am going back to the studio, sit back, relax, drink more coffee, and stay warm. It's crazy out here. The wind's blowing like crazy, and it's 40-some degrees out here. Sure don't feel like no spring. Spring has sprung. Spring has sprung. Fall has fell. And most likely summer's going to be hot as... That's just the way it is around here on the coast of North Carolina. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Like. Share. And comment. And I'll see you in the next video.